All right. Uh, where's the cowboy? Cowboy coming from the CCC account today. All right. We can hear you good. Okay. Great. 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 All right. So, uh, cowboy, you're you're coming in as the cross chain coalition for today. And we just want to say hello to the Crosschain Coalition community. But before let's get started, um, let me start in an orderly manner uh, before I was cut off. First of all, thank you for joining us. Today is Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. Uh, you are joining us at uh, Volumes uh, Pigeon uh, AMA for Paloma. And uh, today we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk um, about uh, the Crosschain Coalition um, and we're going to talk about Paloma. Uh, so in that order, um, my guest joining me today will be the Crosschain Coalition and also Thalima. Howdy, Thalima. Good to see you again. And um, I, the way we're going to break this up is we're going to talk in two pieces. The first thing we're going to talk about was Paris, ETCC Paris, and the Crosschain Coalition experience at ETCC Paris. And then after that, we're going to give an update on um, Paloma to all the flock. And, and this is a shout out to everybody in the Paloma community. Um, if you're a pigeon on Paloma, uh, congratulations. And if you're running validators in our test net, congratulations. Uh, shout out to the wonderful Turkish community, our awesome Russian community, rockstar Indonesian communities, and everyone who is uh, neither of those three groups, um, of course, American communities, uh, and also our Vietnamese communities that are looking to see and help Paloma uh, head to mainnet um, and to see the uh, you know, winning opportunities that value proposition of Paloma has, which is to essentially be the scrappy messenger blockchain for all other chains and for developers, cross-chain communication. So thank you, community. Uh, also, we want to give a shout out to the cross-chain community. Uh, again, uh, uh, I think now 3,000 more strong uh, folks who are in cross-chain coalition. Um, we're going to give you some information how you can get us, but you can find us on Twitter at crosschain co. Uh, that's Twitter slash cross chain co, all one words, uh, all one word. And uh, you can essentially see the newsletter coming out today. Well, we'll talk about the newsletter in a bit. But now we're going to kick off. Thalima and Cowboy, ETCC Paris. Did you return okay? Did you guys get COVID from all the parties or <laughs> were, you, were you all right? I got home safe. I am healthy. No COVID. So thank goodness. So I'm feeling great. I am still riding the high from ECC. It was so much energy. Paris was amazing. So I'm I'm thrilled. What about you, Cowboy? Yeah, no, not so blast. Is there it was, something uh... else I can help with? <laughs> that was funny. Yes, there's something else you could help with. I need lunch. I haven't had lunch all day. Uh, thanks, Siri. Uh, <laughs> anyway, no, yeah, it was, it was a good oh, time. Man. It was a good time. I feel like, uh, like said, energy was crazy there. Uh, <laughs> lots of people showed out. You know, I didn't know going over there that that would be the biggest European crypto event. So that was kind of cool to see. I feel like we saw folks from all over the place. Uh, I, I mean, absolutely. I, uh, um, it, it, it has been pretty amazing to see all the people we met um, and all the people that showed up for the events. Uh, let's talk about takeaways. Okay. And let's talk about what we learned. Okay. So we were in Paris. Um, and I know the cross chain, first of all, the cross chain coalition uh, newsletter issue number 10 came out today, correct, Kaba? Yep, it was actually just uh, published. So everyone can right. check their inboxes. CC number 10 is out. So that's pretty exciting. We've hit 10 issues, which is great. Who would have thought? That's right. That's right. Congratulations. And how many how many members in the Crush Chain Coalition right now? I think we just hit over 3,000 subscribers this past week. Right. So super exciting. Congratulations. All right. So uh, Crush Chain Coalition, first big takeaway. Uh, uh, Crush Chain Coalition held maybe like one of the most massive parties I've ever seen. Um, in in all my uh, life as a crypto event um, uh, lurker, um, I, I couldn't <laughs> even get into the party. I was I was at the door. They said, "You know what? Just get out of here." Uh, what was the atmosphere at the Crushing Coalition um, party uh, in Paris? What did you guys hear? What was what was going through people's minds? Yeah, it was great. I mean, I I halfway cringe, Tark, when you say party because. It, That's it right. didn't it didn't look like that or i guess it looks That's like right. it but it didn't feel like it right um you know we've Correct. been to the the side event parties where there's music blasting and right. you know, you're dancing and all that sort of fun stuff but uh you know this one i feel like had a little bit of a different tone which was which was great yeah. 
um, which was like kind of like more of a cocktail hour, right? I think we saw tons of people there just networking, meeting other cross-chain builders, founders, investors, et cetera. And I think that's why, honestly, people stayed all night. You know, we've thrown, I think this is cross-chain's third event now, and this is the only one that's kind of been more on like a cocktail hour theme. The other two have been yep. more parties. And the yep. parties are great. But people aren't really talking to each other and they're kind of going, they're partying and then they're leaving after a couple hours and going to party somewhere else, right? Um, but here, I mean, we saw all the way till 2 a.m. The venue kept us all in there. No, you know, not many people were leaving. We saw a line until 1 a.m. Um, right. So it was crazy. I think everyone liked this theme. I think everyone got pretty high value out of meeting all the other members there. Um, you know, obviously it was a beautiful venue and, and beautiful production uh, put on by Thalima and the rest of the event team. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it was just different, and I think this one definitely stood out among the rest at, uh, at ECC. I thought it was awesome, too. It was the same night that Rave was going on, and yet I think I saw yeah. five or six people walking around in Ave t-shirts there. So, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was that true? I heard that story yeah. <laughs> that there were people being like, I want to give up my Rave ticket to come yeah. to the cross oh Coalition. God. You know, uh, it, it was funny because they're two completely different things. But, you know, we saw in the, in the you know, the major ECC Telegram chat, people selling their Rave tickets for ECC or for uh, cross-chain coalition tickets. It was amazing. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I must admit, when I was finally able to get into this event, um, people did come <laughs> tell us that what really made it interesting was the music was low. You're correct. It wasn't a party. You could barely hear any music. Um, but people were talking to each other. Um, people were crowding around, talking, networking, um, you know, uh, pitching, uh, you know, uh, you know, just just introducing to each other was very, very impressive. Um, we didn't have any. I, I, again, it went all the way, I think, what, to 2 a.m. in the morning and people were still networking, you know, as as they were sending people out. Um, so I want to say really congrats to also the event team, uh, Thalima here um uh, Thalima, you did an awesome and amazing job so i just want to give a shout out and a little, little clap you. here at Thalima. Um, thank you i, I want to give a shout out to yeah go ahead yeah, i'm just gonna jump in um yeah i did hear that people got kicked out like physically got kicked out from the brave event so we didn't have anyone injured <laughs> or anything so i'm very proud to report that there was no injuries um in the making of our party um, like right. I'm just echoing what you guys mentioned. It was a, it, it really was a networking event and it just happened organically, which what is great is that usually I have to um, be the connector there, but I was so surprised people didn't even know who I was and they were just coming up to me and telling me which projects that they're working on and whatnot. Right. So just seeing it happen organically and just seeing how everyone was so thrilled and excited to be a part of the community. It was just amazing. And also just the format of how we organize the event. Um, I guess it's, it's pretty standard and typical to just have wristbands. And once you're in, that's it. And once you meet capacity, no more people could come in. Um, basically like, um, like the other events, um, like other competing events. However, right. we made sure to have everything on a flow. So once people came in, said hi, and they wanted to leave, that was fine. We had more people coming in. So yes, there was a long line, but if people was, if they were patient enough, they got in. They got in. Well, I, I, I eventually get in after being told I couldn't get in. So I was like, wait a minute. Your own <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. But, but, but um, so wait, but first, uh, second, I think also want to shout out to the sponsors. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to Michael Igorov and Curve. Um, that was the main sponsor for the event. Um, Michael tweeted me, you know, people sending pictures of long lines saying, hey, what's going on? I'm like, dude, there's just so many people that want to come to Curve's event. Uh, so he sent back today saying it was a success. So congratulations. Um, also want to thank everyone again who showed up for the volume dinner the night before. Um, you know, special shout out to uh, folks at Jump Trading uh, and, and the PIF team. Uh, I think special shout out to uh, wonderful uh, folks at uh, NGC, uh, TRGC, and um, a lot of our investors who really uh, made our pre-cocktail dinner event uh, a massive success it was it was a massive win um and i also want to say shout out to our other team members um we we should not forget joyce um where's joyce joyce is not here um but joyce uh we want to say thank you very much uh i think she uh thelima she you guys were sort of you know co-workers co uh, colleagues just cranking hours before the cocktail event 
making sure oh, it was yeah. ready and making sure it was a success. Yes. Oh, she's amazing. So head of design, she just jumped in. We were getting posters and branding as size, like, like three feet tall, trying to scrunch into a small car and she was all over it helping me out so yeah shout out to joyce she did an amazing right. job helping the team awesome and also shout out to Dwayne. yes Dwayne, um our our europe our volume europe uh, um uh, event manager uh thanks for all the efforts you did putting together uh the great locations uh so that we can really had have successful events um so i think back to takeaways uh all right so we're at hcc let's talk about um, a big takeaway that has been really sh surprisingly impactful is the ECC hackathon. Thalima, you were at the ECC hackathon uh, after um, uh, both the dinner and cocktails, like back-to-back -back events, you jumped straight into the hackathon. What was that like? And um, what did you see big takeaways from the hackathon? Yeah, it was, it was quite interesting. Um, I am going to say this as respectfully as possible, but it was very, uh, un or it was disorganized. Um, unfortunately, a lot of attendees felt that as well as the judges. Oh. So, okay. um, but, but we did make the best as possible. There were about 1000 people or hackers that wow. tuned in online. And then we had 300 attendees in person. Um, mm -hmm. The vibe for the, the developers were just nonstop. They were on site working 24 hours. Uh, the security was there to ensure that the safety of the developers. And it was just great popping in and seeing what everyone was working on. Um, we had such a large amount of uh, bounties. I believe it was over $160,000 worth. Wow. Um, so there was amazing sponsors. Um, we basically had, there was Fuel Labs, Neon labs polygon um and of course uh we represented the viper and curve team there which you know everyone was actually really excited to actually to meet some of our teams um we had two speakers from uh apeworks come in and help us out nice. in the workshop and so people were just really excited about meeting some people in Viper in person. Um, yeah, and actually, yeah. we we did promote the event for the online only, but we had about 15 developers show up in person, and they they were excited to meet us. They were like, you're a part of the Viper team. This is great. So um, it was great energy. Um, yeah, so that's the high level there. I think it was awesome. Um, I, I well, so first of all, thank you very much, Salim. I know, and and also thank you to the Apeworks team. Um, special shout out to Apeworks. Uh, great team members that jumped in in a pinch uh, to help with judging and help with reviews. Uh, what was your favorite app that you thought uh, you know was doing really well based on what you saw, Salima? Did you have a favorite? Yeah, I actually did. Um, so there was. Um four different rooms that listen to the pitches in person. Um, I got to jump in and actually listen to it. Um, Apeworks got to weigh in mostly on the technical side. I was able to help with the other judging components. Uh, what stood out from us was uh, there is this project called Senate. And let me find my notes here um, because I think that they're very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. They ended up winning second place for infrastructure. Yep. Um, so, uh, it was pretty interesting. So it's a one-stop solution of delegates. Um, so they help with the participation of governance. So as you guys know, just monitoring governance is actually really hard and it's very fragmented. So it's, it's very difficult to maintain. And so their solution is to essentially help with that. So they created this dashboard for all the forums and also help with the votes, um, and, uh, it's, it, it was quite interesting. So, uh, I'll share the link, uh, to, for everyone to check out. That is actually oh, cool. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. What would you say was the common theme of projects being built at, uh, the hackathon, you know, Tar Tark's talking about, let's get some insights out to the community about ECC. I mean, what were people excited to be building at this year's hackathon? Um, it was mostly we had a few different categories, and so people did build surrounding a 
you know, those categories, but one of which was the economy. So just the economy and then the infrastructure. So uh, we had a lot of um, submissions surrounding about that. Um, but also there was an, very a lot of excitement for NFTs as well. So there's different variations of how to deploy NFTs, how to create different contracts there. So it was quite interesting seeing how people were thinking outside the box and 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 really doing you know taking shape of that. Uh, also, a few teams had a few different buzzwords in there for uh, so they added. Uh, terms such as oh we're adding cross chain and whatnot and so we kind of like laugh whoa you know I know exactly so uh, it was really fun hearing about that like people thinking how to build cross chain so I'll definitely flag those projects uh, for our team and for others out there um, that basically, yeah, that's basically amazing. built around that yeah I think uh, you know I, I was telling Tark this as I was leaving Paris that. I think cross chain is like the number one buzzword right now in in crypto. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we saw you know DeFi summer, and we saw um, you know we're in winter now, but we saw you know kind of the NFT bull run as well. So it went DeFi then NFTs. Now I think cross chain is like cross chain is is the season we're in right now, which is funny. Um, but I just think every team is is either trying to implement it or just saying that they're going to implement it um, just to fit the theme. Uh, right. But I mean, I think if we dive deeper too, it's it's telling of where the state of ecosystems are at. I mean, we see new L1s getting launched every other day. Um, you know, shout out to the guys at Aptos for uh, launching Solana V2, and then the guys over at Mistin too with Sui. Um, you know, all of these L1s are popping up, and you know, the the legacy L1s are um, you know tribal in their own right. And I think builders right now are having a uh, having kind of an epiphany about like, okay, we have all these opportunities to build and opportunities of places to build. Um, let's do some cross chain action. Let's, let's cross pollinate. Yeah. I yeah. agree. Um, yep. A lot of momentum and, and movement in there. And, and uh, I, it would have been nice to see some more cross chain submissions in the hackathon. I think everybody was mainly on Ethereum uh, for ECC. Is that my correct reading Thalima? It was mainly ETH main L1. Yeah, mainly. Um, this, but there were at least two projects that I saw in, in our room that did um, cross chain as well. So they, okay. there were some out there. And then also, you got to remember, I didn't see all the submissions coming through. Yeah. So okay. I can imagine there, there might have been a lot more. And also, we're still doing online judging. So that's closing this friday so Got it's it. just uh, it's crazy how many submissions i offhand i can't remember how many i think it was uh, yeah I, I can't i didn't have the numbers in front of me but th i saw at least 12 pitches in our room and there was four rooms total mm -hmm. okay wow all right so guys i need to switch gears but i will leave this one thing i think we need to do a cross chain hackathon what is is there do i have a vote yay Cross chain hackathon. Or the submissions I do. Must be cross -chain. I, okay. I, I, yes, I got support. People were saying we should do it. They'll collaborate. Yeah. So yeah, yep. let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's switch into Paloma. Uh, so a uh, quick update for uh, all the pigeons uh, on Paloma. So we are still making progress. Last week, um, what we mainly did was deploy the first um, contracts. I think I, I did it on a plane. Uh, I was on the runway from uh, from Zurich to Paris, where uh, I actually hit uh, the um, the proposal for voting for uh, deploying the first contract to the Ethereum blockchain, Compass EVM. And two days later, uh, the vote passed. And of course, um, one day later, uh, we found out that we needed to put money to actually send the contract to Ethereum blockchain. So uh, we asked all our pigeons for 0.1 ETH because again, we can't tell which pigeon would do it. And of course, uh, one of the pigeons did do it uh, and it was successful. And now uh, the Compass EVM contract for Paloma is deployed. And just to give you confirmation, what the hell is the Compass EVM contract? Well, you can think of the Compass EVM contract as the Paloma managed contract, man you know, secured by the validator set um, of all the Paloma pigeons uh, that are the validators on the network. This contract sits on Ethereum mainnet. 
And what it does is it records uh, the validators and the set of validators and their powers so that if anybody sends a message to the Compass EVM, that message is checked to see whether or not it was sent by the validators and their signatures match for the signature that sends the message. So anybody can send a message, but only messages that are come from, coming from the Paloma validator set will be processed and executed. Uh, so the security of the shared uh, validators uh, powers is what makes the Paloma Compass EVM secure. Now that is secure, of course, we had a problem. Uh, we weren't getting the valve sets updated. So we found we had a bug. Turns out that every pigeon <laughs> on our network, about 200 of them are hitting Paloma and hitting each other with the same request to send a message. And so um, our protocol team and, and uh, architect lead Mattia uh, is working on fixing that. And I guess we're coming up with ideas to make sure that not all the pigeons send the same message and not all the pigeons are trying to ask for the same message in the message queue. Uh, once this happens, uh, the next step is to move towards testing it, making sure that it works. And of course, our next phase, which will be our egg drop. So um, for all the validators uh, in the network who've held off so long, uh, you're, you will be rewarded soon uh, with uh, new, new, new uh, stuff that's happening from Paloma. Um, we just want to let everybody know that 0 0.1 ETH uh, is not a... It's nothing that we spend. We're not asking the money for ourselves. Um, this money is going to be spent to send messages from the network. And it's a temporary setup until we uh, essentially roll out our gas management. So if you're on this test net um, and it's like 0 0.1 ETH is a little bit too much, don't worry about it. Um, you could turn off your validator for a bit. Uh, we will be bringing it, you can bring it back on when we have more advanced gas management. And of course, uh, gas fees are paid for by the message senders. Now. Just to let everybody know, of course, in the future, if you do run a validator um, and a pigeon on Paloma, uh, yes, you'll be expected to sort of advance the gas fee payment. The gas fees are refunded to the pigeons on successful transaction or sending the message. Uh, I mean, not successful because the message could fail and you still spend gas. But uh, what we want to let everybody know is that this is important because gas management for us is essentially the cost function of being a validator. That's where the most of the cost will be handled because you're gonna be sending messages across many different blockchains, not just Ethereum. And so this can get pretty expensive, um, essentially to have gas ready to send a message. Uh, you know, we're letting pigeons know that this is gonna be the new phase of the network. We know it's not for everyone. And, you know, it may, you know, some folks may not be able to participate as validators, but that's okay. There are many other ways you can participate on the Paloma network and build a business. We want to help folks see that they can build a business and generate revenues. I can't tell if you're going to generate profits, but there's opportunity to generate revenue. So uh, this week, we are still working on making our fix to be able to update our validator sets. And once we do that, we'll let the flock know, and then we'll let the flock know what we're proceeding to. Uh, if, of course, you filled out the egg drop uh, uh, Google form way back in June 24th, about a month ago, um, don't worry, that form is still with us. And uh, we want to say thanks to everybody who filled it out. Um, eggs are coming, but the eggs need the Compass EVM to work before the eggs can go. Uh, we want to say Paloma is also doing some cool work with Pith. I think if you were here on Friday, uh, we now have Pith price feeds on Paloma, Testnet. Uh, the last uh, blockchain to do this was Terra. Uh, so we're really happy to be following in Terra's footsteps and taking the lead there. We're going to be announcing more stuff with regards to these Pith price feeds because this means now uh, once our Val set works, you can literally set up exchange uh, to execute commands on Ethereum based on the ETHUSD price feeds, just to give an example. If you wanted to put a limit order where if the price hit a certain number uh, and you wanted to sort of execute a trade um, on Ethereum L1, uh, you can do so without having to just leave your, you know, sort of, you know, no, without having to sort of hope that someone will pull the trigger or run your own infrastructure. So think of it as the pigeons as a full data center and a full compute infrastructure that all you have to do is give them instructions when ETH hits 1500, buy me 10 ETH. That's an unlimited order. And buy me 10 ETH until the price goes up to 1600. Uh, you can do that remotely now with Paloma's testnet because we're working on ETH mainnet. Um, we haven't talked a lot about this and, and folks are like, hmm, I don't know what that means, but um, most likely Paloma will be the only blockchain in which you will be able to execute remote limit orders. I'll repeat again, Paloma may be the only blockchain that you can execute remote limit orders on Ethereum. And of course, given that we're going multi-chain, uh, you can imagine executing remote limit orders on any public blockchain. So 
check the video out. It's part of uh, our Telegram channel. And if you're not in our Telegram channel, uh, please make sure to join. And this is where I think you'll see a lot of the hotness, a lot of this stuff being announced. Um, it's going to be Paloma Chain. So it's t.me slash Paloma Chain. So with that wrapping up, uh, let's talk about um, what's coming <laughs> next week. So um, cross chain. Well, what I hear we're thinking about heading to Korea. What do you think, Cowboy? Uh, he's he's here. We're just queuing him up. I think he got disconnected jumping on, though. Uh, that's all right. Thalima, what do you think? You ready for Korea? I, I am. I'm just looking for visas right now, trying to see if we can get them. <laughs> so. uh, you got to get those visas. Come on now. <laughs> Wait, I, I, I mean, I mean, you know, partying in, South, partying in Korea is hardcore. Like, you have to keep taking shots. Like, I... I I left my last time. I was like, yeah, I don't know how they do it, but um, it, it, I think we were there for uh, I forgot it was 2018. We're, we're in Korea for the last blockchain conference, so um, it's going to require for, uh, fortitude of all of us, solid constitutions, and ready to network and <laughs> ready to take a take a shot, pace ourselves, yeah. pace ourselves. It does look pretty amazing. I was checking out the website this morning, and it looks like they have quite a few speakers as well. Um, yep. They they have tickets available for sale, which is fantastic since ECC Paris did not. <laughs> so. Correct. I know. That was nuts. We could not get into ECC Paris ourselves, but we had literally a thousand people show up to the cross-chain coalition party. Exactly. Cocktail hour. That's exactly. amazing. We should do that. Yeah. Probably like All 10% right. of the conference. <laughs> <laughs> and that was great. We met a lot of great people. Um, all right. So last minute here, we just want to let folks know, um, thank you again for, for tuning in. Um, for the Paloma Pigeons, uh, more is coming. And, uh, you know, we're, we're super excited to, to, to share that. Um, if you don't know about Paloma, check out palomachain.com. We are testnet and we are mainnet Ethereum. So that means you can actually play doing secure transactions on the Ethereum mainnet today. Um, and like I said, you can start playing with our PITH price fees. We're going to talk about that, maybe do an announcement with Jump. Uh, more stuff coming next week in terms of uh, making sure our Valset updates are working. And of course, um, if you're new to Volume, uh, we are volume.finance. And uh, our job is to essentially build and, and foster uh, collaboration and building in the cross-chain world. Special thanks to the Cross-Chain Coalition team. We will see you all next week. Thank you, Thalima. Thank you, Cowboy. And thank Thanks, you, community. Sir. Rock Catch and roll. You, you will. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.